Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today, the lovely people at Artix have decided to send me two of their acrylic paint marker sets, and I've decided to test them and see if they are truly the best acrylic markers out there. Before we get started, I'd like to say that all opinions in this video are completely my own, and yeah. For starters, I absolutely love the packaging. It's seriously the cutest color ever, and it's so simplistic yet effective. They sent me their 30A and 30B set, which will both be linked in the description. On the back, it lists the colors included in the set, and I really like the variety of markers that they have. Inside the first set, there is this really cute thank you card, and the markers are sorted into two trays as you can see. They are not dual-ended, there's only one end, however, it is a brush tip, which means that it's a lot more versatile than a bullet tip. And in the second set as well, it's pretty much the same exact thing as the first. And there is also a sticker sheet in this set, which you can stick the color labels that match with the markers on their barrel, which I think is super helpful, seeing as the marker colors aren't always matching their cap colors, and they don't already come with the labels like listed on the marker barrel itself. And again, they just come with two trays like the other one. Now I'm going to be swatching the markers in my sketchbook so you can see how they look when they're dried and on paper. However, you can use them on multiple surfaces, not just sketchbooks. And by the way, this is the Canson Mixed Media sketchbook. One thing that was kind of confusing was that they didn't have the color number on the marker itself like I mentioned before, so I just had to guess the order and label them, but I think I got it right. Overall, they laid down on my sketch of paper pretty well. They didn't cause any like ripping or damage to happen, which I know can happen with some of like the cheaper ones that you can get, but I just did some little circle swatches because I didn't want to waste too much of the ink. And I also wanted to talk a bit about the prices of these markers as well. So on Amazon, both sets individually cost $29.99 USD each, so if you're getting both sets together, then it's around $60. In comparison to something like Posca's, which is a more well-known brand, they cost $35 for 15 markers, and Artix has a much more reasonable price range in comparison to them. Posca's cost around $2.30 per marker, while Artix's cost is $0.99 cents per marker, just under a dollar. And I definitely think that that's a lot more affordable and considering the great quality as well, I think that's a really good price point, especially considering that, like I said before, they have brush tips, which makes them a lot more versatile and you can get a lot more details done. Whereas with Posca's, there are only bullet nibs and I know that they are like giving out different sizes of bullet nibs. Brush tips are just better for this case, especially since my art style is more anime-esque and I like drawing people more. Anyways, I just went ahead and labeled all the colors using my micron marker. I accidentally repeated one of the colors, but we're not going to talk about that. And they also dry pretty quickly, which I wasn'tly surprised with. Now I'm going to be finishing a drawing using these markers in my sketchbook. I was originally going to decorate something, but I felt like all the designs that I came up with were pretty boring or plain. You can probably tell by now that the character I'm drawing is Ai Hoshino from the manga Oshinoko. I recently started getting popularized in my area because it was released as a show, but unfortunately I can't watch the anime because it isn't on Crunchyroll, which is what I have a subscription for. However, I am reading the manga and I absolutely love the art style, it's literally so detailed and pretty. And also the plot is really good, but I won't reveal any spoilers, so go and check it out for yourself. In the story, Ai, who I hope I'm pronouncing the name of right, is an idol, so she has really vibrant and colorful outfits. I tried drawing a side profile, and we all know how hard those are, so this is my best attempt. I also drew her holding a mic because she is an idol, and while drawing liner, I think I messed up a little bit on the nose, but hopefully it isn't that noticeable since I went over it with paint markers anyways. I decided to line it not using my microns because I didn't want to waste ink since I knew that most of this liner would get covered anyways and I would have to go over it again using a new liner is, and that's when I'm going to be using my actual microns. So anyways, as we start coloring, I have to say it's really important to trust the process, especially when it comes to painting or paint markers. At the beginning, I was completely thrown off with how the colors dry differently in comparison to how they looked when they're wet. I figured that I should probably use a similar method to coloring with what I do with gouache since gouache paint also does that. However, some of the lighter skin tone colors, like the one that I'm using right now, dried more pink than yellow or dried more yellow than pink. So that was definitely the trickiest part, especially since I couldn't guess which color they would dry as. I started by laying a coat of this super light skin tone and then marked out where the shadows would be dark pink and gray. The first coat, as you can clearly see, was looking way too yellow, so I went over it with the blush color. But then I realized I couldn't layer it like I do with gouache if I want a different color. Usually I would change the opacity or add more water to my gouache so I can layer it and get a different color. Figuring out how to work with these was definitely the hardest part and coloring the skin was definitely where I was experimenting the most. But after I found the method that worked, I literally spent an hour straight working on it without realizing that that much time has passed. 
They were so fun to use since I had to experiment with my art style considering that I couldn't shade the way that I usually do. When I'm using alcohol markers, I do something called soft shading, which basically means that the colors are blending into each other and the shadows are like kind of blending into the lighter parts of the skin or whatever else you're coloring. But with this, I did cell shading where shadows are a lot more defined and they don't like blend together. So it's definitely like more of a cartoony art style, but I have to say I'm loving it. Speaking of shadows, I played around with the colors of them. I was originally going to do a dark regular pink, which you saw earlier, but it seemed way too plain and blended in with the dress, which I'll color later. So I used the blue as a shadow color instead. It seemed really vibrant at first, which you can see right now, and I wasn't sure how I felt about it. So I decided to use some purples and went over it with the pink again. I found out one way you could actually layer with these markers was coloring a really light color on top of a vibrant or a dark one, and that can reduce how bright it is. So I use this like really pale pink color, which I also use for the skin color over the really bright blue shadow parts and it actually worked really well next i'm coloring the dress which is a bright hot pink color i had a lot of pinks in both of the sets so as i decided to use a light pink to mark out the highlights and then a darker pink for the rest of the dress which you can see me marking in now under the folds i use this dark magenta color because that's probably the darkest pink shade that i had and it definitely seemed light at the beginning but it dried darker later which i'm really happy about i did kind of want to bring in the blue shadows again into the dress color since i already used it on the skin but i didn't have the right blue tone because all the blues that i had were either too light or too dark so i felt like that would just would have looked weird moving on to the hair it was definitely the best part of this whole drawing probably making it the main focus as well I started with purple highlights and then filled in the main areas with the darker purple, which you can see me doing now. Since Ai's hair is like a dark midnight color with some pink streaks in it, I added pink streaks prior to coloring in the rest of the hair, but then I went over most of them because I could always add them back later given the opacity of these markers, and that's definitely a huge pro and helped me a lot, because if I'm using something like gouache, then I have to be really careful not to paint over them because I can't always completely cover over something like I can with these markers. I kind of strayed away from the line art a lot when I was coloring in the hair by adding my own shadows since this piece doesn't really have any specific lighting going on, though I feel like that would be really cool to experiment with so let me know if you guys would be interested in that. I layered a lot of darker purples on top of the light one and the effect literally looks so good. I also really like seeing this part sped up and it's really cool how it looks like I know what I'm doing when IRL I was completely winging it, although it does end up looking really good. I also colored the little bunny hair piece in Ai's hair as well as the pink ribbons and the bottom of her dress which was a really close color to her hair anyway so that kind of made it easy for me to color pick. Also, I wanted to do a little bit of a life update for you guys because I haven't done that in a while. So, as for animes that I've been watching recently, I've definitely gotten into Fruits Basket a lot. I'm currently still on season 1 since I just started watching it, but it's literally so good so far. I think my favorite character is probably Kyo just because I really like his personality and how they develop him as a character from the first episode. I think I still have like one or two episodes left in season one but i can't wait to move on to season two i know some of the spoilers for the show and i have to say i really can't wait for how they build up to that point comment down below some of your favorite animes that you're watching or any recommendations that you have i also finished watching the entirety of the blue lock anime Overall, these markers were so much fun to use. Artic sent me a set last year featuring their acrylic markers as a Christmas gift, and I can definitely see how they improved the formula. As for whether or not you should buy them, I think if you're someone who's comfortable with using paints, then they are right up your alley. It's basically like using a marker version of gouache, where you have more control over where your gouache actually goes. Even if you aren't the painter type, such as myself, they are so much fun to use and experiment with. I'm used to using alcohol markers, so this is definitely a bit of a challenge for me, but I can't say that these weren't fun. They also work well on different surfaces, such as glass or wood, so you can definitely use them for decorating things or making little gifts for your friends or family members. For finishing touches, I just went over it this quickly with like a pink pencil, just add some blush and some more color to the skin, and I redid the outline, and yeah, I absolutely love how this turned out, it literally looks so good, and it's definitely my favorite drawing in my sketchbook so far. So thank you guys so much for watching till the end, I hope you guys enjoyed, and see you guys next time, bye bye!